So it's like it's like a web of all these different roads that meet in circles to decide which which way you want to go basically so imagine all these circles and all these lines all over the landscape and you know the landscapes are just beautiful this Pugliese stone this like orange kind of a burnt orange and white stone is scattered all over the landscape it's absolutely gorgeous look at this this is insane look how beautiful I mean, come on, so good. So I'm here walking up to the Castello. It's basically, the, looks like the church in the center of the town of Ugento, basically. Beautiful little town, I've been here before, long time ago. So I'm having a little bit of trouble finding this Castello, but it's a beautiful walk nonetheless. Look at this caper bush. That's a caper bush right here. It's growing wild. You can see the capers on it. So this place is pretty swanky. I'm gonna have to stay here and check it out. It's in a beautiful, beautiful little town and it's a real gem in the rough beautiful so i'm gonna take a little walk and show you guys the garden it's so beautiful look at this trellises places to look at this craziness little place to sit right here have some breakfast Enjoy this beautiful view. See, this is what Puglia needs. Puglia needs more places like this because, you know, the high-end hotels, there really aren't that many of them. And that's what's really going to drive uh, the tourism is if they put some of these on the landscape. So now, this is the, exactly this, the Pugliese stone, the orange and yellow stone that I'm telling you about. So this whole castello was basically built with that stone. You see the color of the stone? That's all the, f literally the, f so this stuff is all free, basically. Okay. And that's why they built so many of the churches out of the stone, because it's everywhere down here and it's beautiful. So basically all the masserias down here are, are all made from the same stone as well. So... Masseria Potenti, where I'm staying, is also built from the same stone, natural stone, naturally occurring all over this area. And this is what I'm talking about. Harmony, you know, Italy's got so much harmony. It's got so much harmony in the agriculture. The connection between the agriculture and the kitchens. There's so much harmony there. The landscape. Harmony. It's all harmonized. So I'm sitting here waiting for Frankie DiCarlo. I'm early, over half an hour early. So I'm not sure even where we're eating yet. So it's going to be a surprise. I didn't even want to ask, but I'll be posting it soon, as soon as we get going. Also, a lot of you people that have, that have spent time in Puglia before have been, you know, shouting me out on, you know, DM with places I should go. I should check out this. I should check out that. Just realize I have a very tight itinerary, guys, and I'm probably not going to be able to go visit them. So here we are inside the restaurant, Vecchia Botti, and uh, they have Pava Cicoria, so I'm super fucking excited, man. I can't wait. <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted to have. We're going to have a nice antibasti and a nice Pava Cicoria. So we're going to drink Nero di Troia or Nero d'Avola, or we're going to drink Primitivo. We're going to keep it local. There's no reservation, there's no special table, there's no flowers, there's no champagne. And it begins with the wine. They, they got it wrong. They wrote, wrote the book. They wrote, they wrote the, the book. reservation yeah. stayed upstairs. It never came up. No bother. You, you just pour it. I'm sure it's fine. 
Gianfranco Pini is a, is a, one of the better winemakers of Puglia. abbiamo fatto noi, mm -hmm. con pistacchi di bronte e melanzane, oltre che basilico. The pistacchi di pistacchi, eggplants, and what's this over here? Oh, these are the, it's marinated, oh, marinated so eggplant good. with the peppers, it's delicious. Exactly what I'm talking about, about these pugliesi antipasti. What's the question, qui? Belle frittelle di pane. Frittelle di pane, sì. Meaning dough. E quelle piccole, yeah. che è una pasta di pane lievita. È sauce of um, pistacchio. pistacchio di bronte, From basilicos Sicily. and melanzana. Here it is, guys, the Fauci with wild chicory. Wild chicory from the, from the country. Look at the puree, look. This is it. This is, this is the real Salentine food. Completely vegan. Vegan, vegetarian. It's just olive oil, garlic, fava beans, and wild chicory, wild dandelion greens, wild chicoria from the farms. Most of this stuff grows around the olive trees. Nothing but in bags of about a kilo each. So we made about 150. That trial. Parmigiano di Melanzani. Eggplant parm. Potato panzerotti. Basically, uh, basically fried croquettas made of uh, like, like a lightly mashed potato. Yeah. Amazing. My grandmother used to make these. At all the holidays, fried potato croquettes, basically. We used to walk into her house with the smell of this frying every every holiday, Thanksgiving, Christmas. When I opened Frank Restaurant, we gave this is called pita of potatoes. Because we finished the dough with the pizza. Yeah, it's a lot of heavy stuff, but it's very creamy. Kind of has like a semolina crust on it, almost like a dumpling. This primitivo is all anchovies. It's like having an anchovy cake. Unbelievably rich, salty, decadent, amazing wine. You probably would enjoy this night too, with us. No. Poisson, eh? Piccolino, eh? <laughs> so here we have Pomodonini, Caccia Rigotta, Melanzane. So this is actually the Cavatello and orecchietti, but I didn't. I didn't get the orecchietti. You guys yeah, got all the orecchietti. Yeah. I didn't. I, I didn't even get one orecchietti here. Oh, here's actually here's a couple orecchietti right here. See, these baby tomatoes make some sauce down here. These little tiny tomatoes that they get, though, you know, the, uh, the little, you know, cherry tomatoes, amazing, with the cacio ricotta, the combination, and the softer, uh, handmade pasta. Really typical treat down here. Also, he's going to make us a pasta with rigotta forte, which I'm going to talk about in an IGTV post soon. But the rigotta forte down here, I've been trying to get it into New York for the past three years. They stopped bringing it in. Pronti. Che cos'è? Ah, sani, sani. Con rigotta forte, vero? Sì. So that's the rigotta forte. And also inside the sauce, some rigotta forte. Sorry for my English. No, no. So, the rigotta forte is a very strong flavored rigotta cheese, almost like a blue cheese, very, very powerful. Orecchietti con cavallo. I pezzi di cavallo. So, that's horse, guys. Horse, right there. Braised horse. The horse meat is all jelly, all gelatin. Unbelievably juicy and gelatinous. Perfect in a ragu like this with orecchietti. This is magical. Well, we ran out of this. It's all affumicato. Tutto affumicato. This is all smoke. Unbelievable. Big primitivo here, man. Very big. 2012. Orecchietti. Horse ragu. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is really the territory right here. You can taste the territory in the meat sauce. Mm -hmm. So amazing, amazing local Salento, Salentine meal. 
The Orchetti with the Rigotto Forte was definitely a highlight. The Pava Chicoria, another highlight. Those are two of the most popular dishes down here. I was bringing my own Rigotto Forte in through one of my cheese purveyors for a long time. And we were serving Orchetti Salentine. Some of you may, re may remember that dish. We were serving it at, at all three restaurants and it was crushing it. And then all of a sudden we could, could they wouldn't let the Rigotto Forte. All of a sudden, the Rigotto Forte was getting stopped by customs and sent back. Now, you have to understand, this shit smells really bad. I mean, it's really powerful. That's why they call it Forte Rigotto. Because they literally let the Rigotto go bad in a controlled environment. So the flavor is very sour, very acrid. Kind of like a blue cheese, but way more potent. It's an amazing item. I'm still trying to get it, uh, still trying to get it in again. But every time we bring it, we got to throw it away. So it's hard. Because if, if they won't let it in, it basically goes in the garbage. And that's really a shame, you know. So I'm going to try again soon. But every time we try it, we, there's, there's a chance we could lose the, the entire shipment. I could come to this place every day and just have that Fava Chicoria. I'll just have that every single fucking day of the week. And I'd be happy as a pig and shit. This territory here, this terroir here... Yields some of the best produce, cheeses. I mean, the Cachigavala Polilico is one of my favorites as well. I mean, there's so many products here, and we're going to get into them over the next couple days. Go left here. Oh, no, go right. Right. Look at this beautiful, beautiful messeria, guys. Look at these ceilings, all the local stone. Yeah. Also the floors, all the police. So we start off with some, some, some Martina Franca. Mm. Copa. And some little mini pizzettas. Merluzzo. Merluzzo. So that's little baby codfish, basically. Yeah. And totono. On sticks. Pick them up and eat them. It's just basically frito misto. So we're in meat heaven here. Meat heaven. I ordered a bunch of stuff, man. I ordered a horse. I ordered uh, different ragus. I mean, I don't even remember. I just rattled it off and hopefully everything's going to be good. But here it all comes live. So this is what I ordered. I ordered Il Nostro Ragu. So this is like a ragu antibasti. So it's just going to be the meat. Okay. I ordered the puree di fave, uh, the egg, a perfect egg. I ordered the puttanesca. The puttanesca de suona, the uh, ravioli with butter, the horse, and the roasted lamb, local lamb. You know, you're asking yourself, how the hell can two people eat all that? Well, we can't eat it all. You know, we're going to taste a lot of stuff. We ask for smaller portions on everything, half portions if possible, which they're more than happy to accommodate, but they usually still give you a full portion. But we'll just eat half. Ready? Go. 12 different cereal grains in this bread. Puli is the most famous for their bread. Wow. It's hot. It's for another pain. A decanted rosé. The first the first ever. Only 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 Mateus. <laughs> the rosés here are they're famous for the rosés here from Negro Amaro. So they actually age really, really, really. So here it is. What a beautiful, what a beautiful, beautiful bottle. <laughs> Can't see anything on the back. But look at this glass. And we decanted it. <laughs> so I, I poured it. I poured it. This is a big rosé, guys. Huge rosé. Rosé is really... This is the perfect egg. 
which is what I say. I call perfection egg, perfection carbonara. I do prefer uh, a perfection carbonara. Yeah. Very nice. Crack that yolk. Nice. So it's a, so it's a poached egg with dry anchovies and like a tomato soup. Crazy flavor, guys. Crazy. Dried anchovies. I've never tried that before. This is some super exciting shit, man. We're down in this in, in the middle of nowhere in Puglia here. Yeah, in nowhere. We're in the middle of fucking nowhere in Salento. Where are you around? We're in God's country here, yeah, man. It's like so spread out. Exactly, exactly. Mateus just, just pointed it out. Scarpetta, the scarpetta, the scarpetta, the bread, tomatoes and anchovies and a poached egg. I'm I'm stealing this big time. And rosé, perfect. That's right. Dried anchovies. How did I? How did I never think of that? Dried anchovies. I'm an idiot. Obviously, I need more work. Mm. Mm. So beautiful. Tomatoes and anchovies. Come on. So, especially this area of the Salento is a rosé paradise, as uh, Mateus was saying. Why is it a rosé paradise? Historically, this is the this is the place with the best rosés of. I mean, when you think about it, it's always warm down here too. So you have such a such a long growing season, and you also have a long drinking season for whites and you know rosés. And whites have never been that strong down here. I mean, they you know they're getting better, but rosés have always. It's just a great thing to do down here to have rosé. It's a smart move. It's definitely a smart move, especially in the Salento. Negro Amaro rosés down here age well. They're profound. They're more complex. Okay, you can eat. I mean, you can drink them cool. You can drink them warm. It makes complete sense that the place that has the best bread in Italy, right here, Puglisi bread. No one wins. No one's going to argue with me on that. Has the best bread. Also has the best olive oil. I mean, perfect. You can sit here and just eat bread and olive oil all day long. Ah, it's a serbo. It's a it's a it's a it's a pomodoro a peso. Serbo, ah, it's a kind of pomodoro. Serbo. Serbo a peso. Fave. Fave. Escalora al barbecue. Ah, and scarola. So the tomato you saw on this plate was actually sun dried on the vine. So they leave it on on the vine and let it like crinkle up basically and concentrate the flavor with the with the. Try to imagine a fava bean puree with a little bit of burnt escarole, okay, and a super sweet cherry tomato that's literally was kind of aged on its own vine. That was a great dish. This rosé never stood a chance. Really never stood a chance. It's already almost done. I'm going to have to go into a big... Yeah, look at that color. Beautiful. Negro Amaro, 100%. So here's the ragu appetizer, and you can see it's just little pieces of meat that have been braised in tomato. And that, I mean, this is, you know, this is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. This is basically my rigatoni ragu without the pasta and without the cheese, just the meat. So the Neapolitan ragu that I've shown you guys is basically, you know, the method for this. So just pulling out little pieces and making it look nice. But basically, that's all it is. So we're just talking with uh, the guys here. Here in Puglia, they have these places that are machilerias. They're basically butcher shops that also have seats so you can sit down and eat. And they have wood-burning ovens, so they cook the meats in the wood-burning oven and serve it at the tables. Classic, classic Puglia, very old school. And we're going to try and find a place tomorrow to go for lunch for that. Okay, otherwise maybe for dinner. We have basically four meals left here in, in, in Puglia, so we got to make them count. So we're switching to a Primitivo now. It's going to be like ink. It's going to be insane. Huge. We have a lot of big meats coming. We got lamb coming. We got horse coming. It's going to go great with this big, huge. Primitivo is a strain of Zinfandel, actually an ancient strain. You could think of it as like the great grandpa of Zinfandel. But here, obviously, it performs completely different than it does in California. Scombro fish on top. What a kitty. So this is the puttanesca, the puttanesca, yeah, puttanesca. Yeah. puttanesca. What, what wine you have today from, from, uh, from Simona? That's so beautiful. Wow, the, the S Reserva, S -reserva. and the Morella. Look at the, 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 the texture of the, of, the, of the label. 
Holy crap. Lady Guetta riprende un po' la seta. Riprende la seta perché è l'ingresso in bocca che loro dicono. You know, in this puttanesca, the tomatoes are so sweet. The olives are uncured and absolutely bitter, like completely bitter. But when you eat them together, it's perfect. Bitter and sweet together is magic. It's always magic. And then you add in the fish and the salt. Due primitivo. Tre. Tre, scusa anche. Bomba. Reserva, look at that label. Go for it. Cazzo. 2013, vai. Ink, like ink. So spaghetti chitarra, which means like guitar strings, made from burnt wheat, grano arso, and vongole, little clams.